This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Hello, hello out there. Hello, Mordic world. Hello and welcome to the Mordic cast number nine. Uh, today, we'll have a special interview because I'm talking to a colleague of mine, to Florian, who will tell us a little bit about the perfect CMS integration with Mordic. And uh, also, we will talk about this sprint that is scheduled for next week a lot. It is uh, obviously a virtual th- sprint these days open for everyone and very easy to access for everyone. So uh, yeah, uh, don't miss that part. Before we go there, hello, Leon, how hello. are you, do- how are you yeah, doing I'm, today? I'm pretty good, aren't you? I'm very good. Sun is shining. I'm happy that we do another Mordic Mordic more yeah, cast finally. today. And I'm also happy about good news from the Mordic world. Yeah, um, the 2.16.1 is uh, finally released. Me and a colleague of mine made some user acceptance testings. And yeah, it's finally released. Go out and test it out. And we are pretty happy that it's finally released. Yeah, it's obviously a bug fix release, uh, but but with important things. Oh, yeah. So uh, yeah, don't, don't wait, don't hesitate. Uh, it's a good thing. Yeah, and other than that, uh, all energy can now go to the final distance for Mordic yeah. 3. Um, the The product is pretty much there, it's pretty stable now. Um, all the focus is now going to the upgrade and migration process to make that even more convenient and even more robust. Um, and it's a good thing that the team is taking the time to get that in a, in a perfect condition yeah. too and then uh, it's finally m3 time up on the horizon m3 shines bright <laughs> yeah good um the user topic that i want to talk to bu- talk about today is uh, actually derived from a real life problem that that you had last oh, yeah. week, I think. Leon, uh, tell us about it. So um, w- I had a real-life use case in which I needed to save some uh, extra information when a form was submitted. And to be a bit more specific, we have a form with a checkbox for marketing opt-in, which is pretty common. And I needed to persist the exact time and date that the user filled out the form so we'd be able to prove if and especially when the user gave his marketing opt-in. And to prove if the user gave his opt-in is not too hard with Mordic, but uh, Mordic does not offer an out-of-the-box solution for the exact time and date to persist that. So we did some research and uh, Eki found a way to help me out and to solve the problem and I think you should give us a quick run on, on how you solved that. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it has been documented anywhere yet, but it is basically a, a general thing to uh, to self to save calculated values with a with form data. Uh, when you consider a form so user submits or enters some form fields and submits that form um, then we can save what he or she entered. Uh, what, we, what we want to do here is to um, to save something that has been calculated by the computer, like uh, what is the date or what is the yeah. time. Another example would be uh, save the place where this form has been submitted. Uh, this is frequent, frequently used uh, if you have the same form in multiple places, if you have multiple white paper downloads, you don't want to create a single form for every landing page. You want the same form, it's much easier to maintain. And you want the campaign to figure out where the form was submitted and send the right white paper on that basis. So same story, we want to save something along with the form value, uh, sorry, with, with the form yeah. data. <laughs> and. Um, the general idea how to do that is always the same. We let JavaScript uh, figure out the calculation and hand it over. And by handing over, uh, I mean, send it to the 
contact. Form data can be mapped to contact or company data, as we all know. And the trick that we do is we, we create the custom field that we like. In your case, we had a marketing opt-in date field, uh, text field, um, not a date field normally. Um, and then what you can do is create a hidden field in your form and map that hidden field to the custom contact field that we just created. So we have form fields and we have contact fields, so don't mix them up. Um, we match the hidden field to the contact field. Um, and then we have another field in the form, uh, which is an HTML field. And in that HTML blob, we can drop the JavaScript, um, some, some intelligent JavaScript to calculate the data and hand the, the, the result over to the hidden field. So we have two extra form fields. The user won't notice any of that. One calculates the data, the other receives the, that calculated data and maps it to the custom contact field. Sounds tricky. Actually, it is a little <laughs> bit tricky. You need to be careful. But uh, we have a knowledge base article on it. We have uh, the actual JavaScript code that you can take from there. And then you can solve, solve a lot of problems uh, exactly that yep. way. We had two examples. There are more examples like I want to know or I want to act based on the referrer, where the user came from, or on whatever language, browser, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the idea. Um, again, this is for form data with a knowledge ba base article for that. There are other places with similar requirements, doing dynamic stuff on a landing page, uh, having JavaScript calculating stuff on a web page. That's pretty basic stuff. In emails, we have requirements that are similar and there is an actual solution for that that gives you trig logics. Um, for those who know what it is. Um, there, there's a plugin called the Advanced Templates Bundle uh, in, on GitHub from, from Logicify. Logicify, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, again, it's Advanced Templates Bundle. Uh, let me put it in the show notes and you can find it there. That lets you calculate a lot of stuff in emails and it's based on, on a common framework nice. yep. called Twig. Uh, but there is yet another place uh, where we do want calculated values, and that is in, in campaign stats. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we started off with, with the example of the marketing opt-in date, and that can be solved just like we said. But if we, for instance, want to save the uh, double opt-in acceptance date, so the, the, the point in time when the user confirms or hits the confirm button in the email, that is actually not possible uh, with any of the described uh, ways. So what we would have to do is uh, n uh, have a campaign that uh, detects that the user visited the page or clicked the email. Um, that's a regular double opt-in campaign. And then w it would be nice to have an, a, a campaign action uh, that stores the data when that click was detected in the contact. And we have no such campaign action and I can't think of a, any hack or workaround to store that data. So in my mind, that is the wish list item of the week. And I put it in the show notes and uh, link to the forum. Yeah. Except if you, dear listener, uh, know of any workaround for me, uh, I would be so happy to, to learn about it. So drop me a line and I'll tell the world about it. Ooh, okay. Um, once again, sorry for, for this complex technical stuff, uh, but it is a very common problem in campaigns that you need this stuff. And I, I think it's, it's worth documenting it, documenting it uh, very general, but with specific uh, guidelines too, and putting it out in the world. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, let's talk about the sprint a little oh. bit. Um, our flights have been canceled now, and uh, the event as an in-person uh, event uh, is not happening. Instead, it is uh, now an online event. 
And uh, there are actually some, quite some upsides of that decision. Um, we already have applications from around the world, from from Asia, from Africa, for, from the Americas, Ooh, nice. um, and of course from, from Europe. So it's much easier for people now to, per to participate in the sprint. Once again, the sprint is open for everyone, not only for existing team members. It is not a code sprint or not a pure code sprint anyway. Uh, all the, the active uh, teams are meeting and, and do have their backlogs and, and um, do want to make discussions, but also get things mm -hmm. done. Um, so the, the product team is certainly going to do a good part of coding and uh, also of testing. Yeah. But they're also talking strategy and features, etc. And uh, just to give you other examples, a marketing team might work on, on a slide deck or a campaign. The community team will discuss the modicon or, or other reach outs. Uh, the education team might uh, finalize the FAQ for the support area. Uh, and uh, many more items, of course, in every single team, but but to make it more tangible. And um, so if, if you are willing and able to, to uh, contribute a little bit of your time, ideally full day or even two days, it's much more fun if you can do more than just an hour. Um, but even if it's just a, an hour or two, please um, follow the link in the show notes. It's the same link that we had before, but is now updated to the virtual event and, and uh, the uh, material that belongs to that. Follow that link. Um, come to the checkpoints. We will have multiple checkpoints where we meet online or the teams may meet online uh, and discuss the next steps. And yeah, then get to know people, pick your item and, and get, get started. Uh, it's good to hang out together, but it's also cool to, to actually be a part of Mordic, be a part of the product and the project. Um, and a lot, a lot of that can be done asynchronously. And we actually need to work asynchronously because we are in so many different times. Across now. the globe, yeah. 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 Uh, well, it's uh, from date of recording now it's uh, less than a week and i'm very much looking forward to that event yeah, same good so let's uh, switch gears um we now come to the interview with uh, florian vessels again a colleague of mine so it's a very special interview for me um, and we discuss the perfect modding integration with content management systems here we go yeah there we go Today is a little bit special and different than the other times because uh, I invited Florian to talk to us about uh, Type of 3 CMS integration with Mordic. And Florian is actually a colleague of mine. Welcome, Florian. Hi, Eckhart. Hi. Um, yeah, let's let's start with your person. First of all, I, I, I mean, I know you much better than I know all my interview guests before. But maybe not everybody else. Yeah. So, so tell us about your background and your role with Leuchtfeuer. I'm a software developer for PHP, um, especially in uh, Symfony or uh, yeah, the integration in Type of Three or Mautic, so open source projects. Um, yeah, and I'm I'm the hardcore guy. You know, I I do all the core stuff uh, and which is deep inside. Uh, yeah, that's what I do here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I guess Florian is just hiding a lot of what he's doing. He's also coaching the, the, the dev team. Yeah, that's the soft skills. <laughs> well, okay, it's, it's a combination. Yeah, never mind. Um, so you've been doing uh, open source stuff for all of your developer life. Yeah. Uh, what's the best part of that for you? Oh, that's a tough question, but um, it's a community. Um, you know you can interact with them. You, you have people all over the world where you can ask or which you can ask questions and uh, you can participate in events you can even organize that and um, yeah that's what i love the most yeah can you give, give an example of what you did this year uh, i was on a <laughs> snowboard tour in in whistler with uh, yeah, a few type of three guys or nerds uh, from all over the world and it was yeah fantastic awesome that's whistler canada right For yeah in canada yeah. yeah oh i'm jealous Okay, um, so as a as an original Type Three guy and a Symphony developer, how hard was it for you to get into Mautic? It was not that tough. 
the architecture is is what what I was expanding. Uh, the documentation is good for for um, for developers. It's very very good. So um, the guy um, which tells you how to write uh, custom plugins is is good. Uh, it's a it's a good starting point, and um, then it was not that tough to to find all the files and uh, yeah the the automation which it uh, which the code works. Yeah, and fill the gaps, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There, there's a, there's of course a lot of uh, try and error, but uh, it's not not that many of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, you've been doing some some customer extension or or uh, plugins for Mordic, uh, but also some public stuff. What, what are the most famous ones? Yeah, I, I would say the most famous one is um, the Trigger Dialog plugin for for Deutsche Post, uh, where you can or which you can send um, postcards or letters from. And then there is another one, the Authero plugin, um, which allows you to log in via or by using your Authero account to a Mordic instance. Uh, for or for those, even multiple instances. Yeah, for those who, who don't know that, uh, if you just have a single instance, uh, then you just log in with user and password. But if you have multiple, uh, maybe tens or, or a hundred, like we have in, in the Type of Three world, then you don't want that. You want a single sign-on. And uh, the most professional, most convenient one we all know is Auth0. Uh, and that lets you have a single authentication so you log in once a day and then can get into all your instances. And so it's super convenient. And moreover, uh, you don't have to create the users on every single instance. And even more importantly, you don't have to delete them when, when a user is, is leaving the company or whatever. It's not like you have to delete them at 100 points. And uh, a user can change his password at, at one point because he won't do it or she won't do it in a hundred points so that's important yeah okay so that's a sidetrack uh, let's get back so that's uh, trigger dialogue uh, of hero and others and then there's of course the type of three integration with a little difference that, that in that case or in the case of a cms just like other systems like shop systems or so the integration works uh vice or the other way around the cms yeah. uses the mordic api not vice versa right that's right mm. so yeah let's let's take a closer look there um in in that scenario first thing is of course that the standard components like like a form or other things are reflected in some sort of plugin right the normal way or the the very basic way to to integrate mordic with any website is to take the javascript or even the html and uh throw it into the remote system manually. So let's start from there. What can a plugin do for us? Um, the most powerful point is that editors uh, don't have to take care about um, how to implement the JavaScript, uh, which um, links to Mautic. Um, he can check a box in the back end and uh, then Tapestry will all do, uh, will do the fancy stuff for him and uh, implement the JavaScript by its own. So that's very, very easy. And um, There is a GUI for everything, so um, he can choose from forms he created in Mautic or uh, someone else created in Mautic, or even ca uh, he can create new forms uh, by using um, a second uh, Type 3 plugin or extension, it is called uh, the Forms extension, which is delivered by the Type 3 core, and uh, use this GUI to create Mautic forms and uh, send all the data to Mautic, But not even to Mordek, he can do more with the data. Uh, for example, uh, when he creates a newsletter sign-up form, um, he can use his data for maybe MailChimp or another integration, or maybe Mordek too. That was not a good example. But um, when he creates a registration formula for a form for um, yeah, where users can register for maybe an internal area of the website. Uh, he can create the user and send the data to Mordic so that uh, Mordic knows there is a user and the user has signed up for uh, the internal area of the website. And um, yeah. yeah let, let's back up a little bit yeah. uh, because I think we, we already went to the second step here. First is uh, that we encapsulate all the standard features that Mordic brings in a nice UI. 
So I can add the mod. I can create the form on the modic side and and uh, throw it into the CMS via UI. Not that's with, one way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the user don't has has to mess with HTML, and he or she doesn't even have to to have the rights to do that because that's uh, an issue in some places yeah. to to begin with. And the same is true for the tracking and for um, dynamic content and etc um, and then there are there are ways to keep the user even more inside its own system so no longer does someone have to create a form in the modic UI and understand the modic thinking they can now use the type of 3 form framework create their regular forms and just hook it up to modic uh, and uh, don't 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 leave the system at all. So that's all done via the API then, obviously. Yeah, that's the API calls, yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Um, that's definitely nice. Is there other things beyond standard feature set? Yeah, we have um, the possibility to um, link assets, for example, um, or um, we can synchronize the language of um, of the user. So when he visits our website on, in the German language, um, we can tell Mautic uh, he now has uh, the German language and will receive all the mails in German. Or when he uses the English website, um, we can say, okay, he's using the English site, so maybe we will send him the the English newsletters. Yeah, and that's not only about mail, it's also about, yeah. about dynamic content, focus item and all that. When the user switches language on one end, then the modic side gets informed about that, right? Yeah. yeah. And then there, there's our famous targeting, which is uh, something we talked about before. It basically uh, duplicates what uh, dynamic web content does in modic, but it, it is frankly way better than, than that because it uses uh, regular type of three mechanisms and uh, so that means it, it is cacheable, it, it, can, it can do many many other things. It uh, is not based on JavaScript but it is, it is just regular type of three content. It is completely normal to the editor and it is even more powerful so you can easily say okay this is for unknown users and uh, this is for this group these groups etc and we can map uh, multiple segments into a single persona and, and so on so yeah and and you don't need a single line of css because uh, it will look out of the box like the website looks like so, yeah, it, yeah it just is regular it is cms content yeah, yeah. so I, I love that a lot and um i think we had a nice example a couple of weeks ago how to use this feature for really dynamic web content based on previous behavior of users. So think of a returning user who abandoned some sort of process. Uh, you can then pick him or her up where, the, where they left uh, in a really seamless way and good looking way. And you can um, expand all that beyond just a snippet of content you can modify entire pages page trees uh, layout uh, colors what, what, whatever you like based on the segments in the end yeah powerful stuff and uh, it's all done through the api as you said um yeah except the tagging so the tagging is um, implementing a javascript but uh, the other stuff is oh, api oh yeah but, but yeah. i was referring to the yeah. targeting yeah, right? the, yeah that's all yeah. the api stuff yeah, yeah. okie doke so beyond the fact that this is obviously an ongoing effort how much effort would you think was it to create all that yeah, it was a lot of effort, especially in the beginning um, when we had to get to know the APIs and uh, figure out how to use that and and how we can um, implement the matching between modic forms and the type of three forms. So there was a lot of work and and I had a lot of help there from uh, Jurian Jansen, especially from him. From him, um, he developed the first uh, version of the modic ver uh, modic plug-in for type of three and uh, then we have help from Nicole Cordes um, 
She takes care about the OAuth mechanism that it works. There were some bugs in the OAuth plugin that is used, or the OAuth uh, library that is used by Mortic. And uh, last but not least, we had a lot of help from Helmut, uh, which implements the basic stuff and all that is regarded to the targeting of persons and matching from Mortic segments to, uh, we call it in Type 3 personas. Yeah, but it's good to do that as a team, and I appreciate all the work there. So, Props yes. to, to, to everybody who assisted there. That's what I said in the beginning. It's open source. That's what I like. <laughs> yeah, true. And uh, also, uh, it has to be said that that was your biggest uh, Mordic project by then. So it was a combination of general learning uh, on the Mordic 3 side and actual implementation and, and also figuring out solutions on the on the Type 3 side as opposed to the Mordic Definitely, side. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, for those who want to take a closer look, um, I take it we still have a two-layer approach here because we have that uh, general marketing automation layer with personas, etc. Um, and the idea to be able to hook in, hook in multiple or di different uh, automation systems there into more into type of three and Mordic is the one implementation that we have and frankly the only one we really care about but if, if somebody comes along with some other automation system then from the type of three side it's perfectly uh, possible to plug that in as well so what you really need is two extensions in type of three which are depending on each other one is called marketing automation And one is called Mortic, and they are both available in the Type of 3 repository. Is that right? Yeah, they are. Okay. And what you find in the Mortic marketplace is only the, the Mortic extension. So, so it's the second layer. So yeah, that's say. the second layer. Okay, so got it. The, yeah. the special stuff for okay. Mortic. Yeah. So if you want to install the full thing on the Type of 3 side, all you have to do is use the Type of 3 uh, extension repository. And the... Mordic Marketplace is just a reference. You don't have yeah. to install anything in Mordic. That's it. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that it's really powerful. I've seen mu multiple, I would say many, but I've seen uh, more than a handful of, of projects who who did really fantastic stuff with this technology. Also, I can say that it makes users really happy, especially in, in corporations where you have multiple editors, not just one power user, but multiple real-life users who have to use the systems. So that's a good thing. And I also think it's it's fantastic to uh, have the visibility in another system. It really helps Mordic to reach out for new communities, new, new users, new customers, and um, to spread the word, basically. Right? Yeah. Okay, did, did you, by the way, look at other integrations when you started or did you learn anything from, from existing integrations like word processor? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I would say no, I don't take a look at other integrations. Um, just like I said before, I take a look at the API and the documentation of the API and uh, I know what Type 3 can do uh, and how editors uh, use Type 3, and so I started to implement these things by using the API, not taking a look at any other integration. Yeah, I know when, when we started this whole project, there was a pre-existing code by Julian, yeah. uh, which was, was basically wrapping the, the standard Mordic stuff into a Type 3 plugin. And uh, we, we sat down with the in intention to do much better than that. Yeah. And at that point, At our idea finding workshop, we did take a very brief, brief look at other systems, but didn't find anything that we like. Uh, so that was really the point where we said, okay, let, let's break some ground here and invent stuff. Uh, maybe the other way around would work to, to help others learn from us. I, I don't know if any of any requests that we ever received there it, are no uh, which is pff, too bad uh, i mean uh, we're happy to help and i would love to to help other cmss get better as well and to, to get better integrated into mordic um so maybe that's 
one thing that the Mordic project should should also organize to have some some cross interaction between these CMSs. Yeah. Uh, maybe there are other ideas what could be done to help people get better. I don't know. Can you think of anything? No. Yeah. Well, it's an open <laughs> invitation. If if anyone out there is listening, if if you are considering doing something like that, or if you're looking for a, a uh, cooperation to get uh, something done in, in, in the different CMS, please do contact us, and yeah. uh, we're certainly we're happy to help. Yeah, yeah, like always. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any other tips or wishes that you would like to to talk about? Uh, My for the Mordic team? My first wish is Mordic 3. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Maybe, who knows? Maybe it's here before we air this episode. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Okay, maybe. Okay. maybe. No kidding. Uh, but, but that's the next big thing, I, I guess, for us, because um, we want to um, take care about the compatibility for the Type 3 extension to Mordic 3 when Mordic 3 is on the market. So... Um, that's the next big thing for us. But um, what what I have on my wish list is a much more powerful API. For example, some API methods uh, or calls to modify user segments on the fly or um, maybe to trigger campaign steps for users um, like the console already do that or do, yeah, do that. Mm. Yeah, that, that's... Some, something that, that I would love to see because um, the world is, is changing and, and uh, marketing automation is much more interactive now. It's, it's not so, so much focused on email marketing anymore. And if, if we want to react on the fly to what people, people are doing on the website, we need to get away from, from just relying on the cron job and waiting five minutes before we can do anything on the website. Um, so the idea here is to, to look, on, uh, look at certain signals and then turn that into things that we trigger via the API. And um, that is, at this point, not possible because, because uh, at least there's no clean way to do it. Yeah, there is no... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's the next thing. Uh, modding is open source, so I can implement that if I want to. <laughs> yeah, I was with but, so but, many but ideas. you know the problem with the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but but uh, plus one from my side, um, and obviously more integrations, better integrations with other CMSs, but also with all other systems can always help. The, um, the modic project should actively reach out to to whoever we can and help them integrating with Mordic and, and integra integrating really fantastic with Mordic because we are open source. If the other side is open source as well, even better. Even better, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we should absolutely encourage that and, and um, support that. Um, yeah. Good. Anything else? Not from my side. And then where can people find you online? Yeah, people can find me on GitHub or on Twitter. It's Flossels. Um, I guess Eki will link that on the show notes, maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. Uh, would, maybe, maybe and I get some more followers there or, or, yeah. or not. <laughs> <laughs> or so some issue reporters on GitHub, maybe. Oh, no. Uh, no. <laughs> ah, what issues? Forget that. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks welcome. for the insights. Thank and you, Eckhart. Yeah, I talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Bye bye. Oh, what a nice interview. I really love how much power the Typo 3 Mothic uh, integration offers. And I'm really excited uh, for new updates and how this will all resolve. I'm pretty excited. Oh. Yeah, yeah. the thing that, that uh, Florian mentioned about the remote assets or the, the Mothic assets yep. being controlled, being uploaded, being selected directly from within the CMS. That's a really cool feature, and that's in the pipeline. I've, I've seen it working. It's not in the mainstream yet, but uh, that's an, another extra power. Yeah, piece. super cool. And um, yeah, I, I love how it's done in Type of 3, but I would love even more if the same power could be integrated to other CMSs as well. So people in Drupal, in WordPress, <laughs> everywhere, yeah. uh, 
look at what we're doing, talk to us, we're happy to help and then uh, go go for the best modic integration possible. It's it's a really a deal breaker. Yeah, nice. Okay, okay. So, um, we did talk about the sprint. Uh, there are other things coming up. Obviously, a lot of virtual event, yeah, of events, events, <laughs> user groups, etc. Um, we have a nice new thing in the planning that is called the Mordic Cafeteria or Mordic Cafe. I don't know yet. Um, basically, a handful of, of uh, slots during the week where where the Mordic community can meet in a regular video chat just to hang out to have a coffee to coffee together but also maybe to to discuss small items to ask small questions to um, stay close to get closer and uh, to to have a good time yeah. and to get back to work <laughs> re-energized so um yeah check that out uh it it will probably be started with the sprint and, and then just kept that way. And I'll have the link in the show notes too. Mm -hmm. And speaking of virtual events, um, the Morticon, the original idea, as we all know, was to do it in September in Boston as an in-person event. Um, and the other option would be to go all virtual or there's the, the in-between option of a hybrid event. So some people on site, some remote. I'm not convinced that the hybrid is the best approach. Um, so we'll see, maybe we'll make the decision during the sprint uh, to go all virtual or to actually go hybrid. There are pros and cons for both, but we need to make that discussion and the, the decision yep. too. Um, if we go all virtual, that also means that the date is up in the air. We may as well move uh, a little bit later in the year. Uh, for instance, the week before uh, Thanksgiving, there's no reason not to do that. Travel would be a no-go no, no go in that week, but um, the virtual conference, why, why not in that week? I don't know. Sure. We'll see, stay tuned, and uh, hopefully we'll have a discussion by next oh, week. Yeah. And if nothing else, in the next multicast. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So, hmm. did we miss something? No, I think. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sad. You're sad? I'm, I'm pretty sad. Oh, <laughs> Not sad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, good to hear that. Okay, okay. Then um, I would li like to remind everybody to um, get back with feedback to us. There's way too little feedback. Uh, we have a good amount of, of listeners these days, but... but we rarely hear from from you guys, um, so let us know what you think. Let us know what you wish for. Uh, give us uh, technical feedback, but also uh, about the format and, and everything. Yeah. And uh, don't forget to to like and share. Et tell your friends to rate and review. <laughs> oh yeah, the, even more importantly, tell your friends or t tell your colleagues in person. Give give us uh, thumbs up. In, in an email or so, not just online, and uh, spread the yeah. word. Thank you very much. Good. Um, yeah, done. done. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go back to work. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, w whatever the difference <laughs> is. Okay, no, thank you very much for listening. Uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. -bye.